Light at the end of the lockdown tunnel. Tonight, three new cases, two in the community but known sources. Is Greater Brisbane on the eve of escaping restrictions? How did we get here? Is Queensland's slow and steady vaccination policy behind the latest lockdown? We meet some of the everyday Queenslanders caught up in the drama. As Virgin Airlines hit the panic button, laying off staff despite millions in taxpayer subsidies. Australia's Olympic uniform for Tokyo unveiled, does it win a gold medal? And we answer the question everyone's asked, air fryers, are they worth the hype? This is Nine News Queensland. Good evening. We probably shouldn't get our hopes up, but there are good signs Greater Brisbane could be out of its snap three-day lockdown by this time tomorrow. Overnight, only two local cases recorded. Authorities now feeling more confident Easter will be saved. Given yesterday's blowout, the results overnight took almost all by surprise. We have some very encouraging news. Three new cases, one in hotel quarantine, two in the community. One was a nurse at PA Hospital who was vaccinated, the other a housemate. Tests have established a direct link and confirmed the nurse was infected by the same patient who passed it on to the first infected nurse. It is exactly the same as the genome sequences for that second cluster related to the nurse and her um, friends. There's now growing confidence the latest outbreak is being contained and contained much sooner than many expected. The fact that we do not have any unlinked community transmission in the southeast or in our state is absolutely encouraging news. Encouraging too that 33,400 came forward to be tested yesterday, raising hopes the Greater Brisbane lockdown won't need to be extended beyond five tomorrow afternoon. Fingers crossed, all will be looking good for Easter. If we see very good testing rates across Queensland, and we don't see any unlinked community transmission. The Premier. First, the state government was forced to explain why non-COVID patients were being treated in the same wards as COVID cases. Now, with new rules enforced, mandating all frontline workers get the jab, tonight our leaders are facing tough questions on Queensland's vaccine rollout. Day two of hospital lockdown at the Princess Alexandra. Vaccinations continuing as non-COVID patients are moved out of Ward 5D. Were there COVID patients in Ward 5D and non-COVID patients at any time? This is their infectious diseases ward, so they're all separate rooms, so they're all managed separately in that ward. Chief Health Officer Jeanette Young today emailing staff explaining new rules requiring everyone working with COVID-19 patients to be vaccinated against the virus. The new edict comes after two nurses in Ward 5D contracted COVID, one who hadn't been vaccinated and another who had, but only four days before it's believed she became infected. Remembering she's only had the first dose, so it usually takes a week after your first dose before you get a significant degree of immunity. We need to make sure uh, that if you are looking after COVID patients, then you should um, be vaccinated. Nine News has been contacted by nursing staff at the PA hospital, complaining some Queensland Health Administration workers at Eight Mile Plains received the first jab before they did. Another worker emailing us, why have Queensland health employees such as myself, a wardsman who work at Queensland and health facilities on the Brisbane north side all had our first AstraZeneca vaccination two weeks ago, yet the facilities have no contact with COVID positive patients. I would have gladly waited to allow the frontline staff to get done first. Premier, are you satisfied with the, with the efforts to get these frontline health staff vaccinated? Because we know the vaccines were there. I can give examples of instances where administration... 89% of 1A have had their vaccines. The health minister actually went through that in detail. And what she said is if you have uh, volumes left in that, um, in that vaccine, you don't discard it, you use it. So, Tim, to your point, you're talking about staff. Why is the Commonwealth not doing the aged care staff at the same time they're doing our most vulnerable? Premier, it's about priorities though, because we have, like, I can give you an instance where a public servant who isn't a frontline health worker, he got his vaccination weeks ago, yet his partner, who is a frontline 1A, Queensland Tim, health I don't worker, have those details been... on me, but I'm telling you. But I don't have those details on me, we'll investigate that for you. 
Now, I didn't hear back from the government on that issue, but I can tell you since this outbreak, there has been a massive push behind the scenes to get frontline health workers vaccinated. For everyone at home who uses the health system, this is critical as our hospitals are strained at the moment. And that is getting worse because the Princess Alexandra lockdown is stopping doctors moving between hospitals. This afternoon, I was also sent this email distributed by Queensland health bosses instructing all staff who enter Ward 5D between the 23rd and 26th of March to start a two-week quarantine. Queensland health bosses saying this will be extremely disruptive to clinical services and also affect a large number of staff. And Andrew, Melissa, this just goes to show the flow-on effects these lockdowns can have on our hospital systems. Yeah, that is yes. clear. Tim, thank you. Well, on paper, the lockdown is isolated, but it's affecting Queenslanders right across the country. Travellers caught out and forced into quarantine. Tonight, for many, it's a confusing, anxious wait as rules change by the hour. The lockdown's brought a trip of a lifetime, crashing down. For his 80th, Peter Harris boarded the GAN, Adelaide to Darwin to quarantine. The party shirt's on, but the party's over. It was super cruel because we were in the line to go on the helicopter tour. For 30 long hours, Peter and daughter Susan had to isolate in that cabin. Now, in their Darwin hotel, they await a test result and an uncertain future. Either we get fed to the crocodiles or released, we're not sure. <laughs> Confusion echoed in Melbourne. Among the travellers sent to hotels, a Brisbane man told he'd be able to isolate with family before they changed their mind completely unlawful, unfair. Victoria, Tassie, SA, WA and the NT now either barring Queenslanders from southeast hotspots or putting them into hotel quarantine. New South Wales and the ACT only slightly more lenient. You can isolate at a home for two weeks. Don't cross a few borders. <laughs> That's my hot tip. Amid a plea to other states to still cross theirs and to take a punt on a Gold Coast Easter. I say to all the people in Sydney and Melbourne, if I'm there wanting to come to the Gold Coast, I would get online and book. I'm saying the risk here is 79 bucks. As police patrols keep a lookout for those crossing city borders. Because even in a lockdown, cars are still clearly on our highways. People, after all, do commute from city to the coast. For now, though, police are not concerned. Not particularly. Um, what we've seen, I think, is everyone understands what's required of them. Staying locked down. Adam Hegarty, Nine News. Ongoing uncertainty over whether our lockdown will be extended has angered small businesses. Many are already on a knife's edge with the JobKeeper subsidy over and a bleak Easter long weekend ahead. Albion's Fiamo Trattoria restaurant will be closed this Easter long weekend. Between public holiday rates for staff and uncertainty over whether lockdown will be extended, there's little point opening. The restaurant would lose money either way. Everything is on a day-to-day -day basis and we can't live like that. You don't know if the customers are going to come in. It's not just restaurants, retail shops too, who are expecting an Easter holiday boost. Certainly our retailers are very nervous at this time. I mean, this is the lead up to the Easter long weekend. At Brisbane Holiday Park at Eight Mile Plains, the phones have been running hot with cancellations. They lost 80 bookings in a matter of hours. Hundreds more this weekend now in doubt. We've had so many cancellations for the next two weeks. We're already getting cancellations for Anzac weekend. So the confidence is gone. They just hired eight new casual staff and now they can't give them any hours. We had reception girls in tears this morning watching some of the biggest groups they've ever made cancel. The Chamber of Commerce and Industry calling the ongoing uncertainty a thorn in small businesses' side. All businesses ever ask for is a clear framework of what to expect moving forward, and unfortunately, that's the certainty that they're not getting. Phil Bella fears unless the state government steps in with concessions on small business taxes, there'll be another pandemic. The next pandemic is going to be suicide and depression. Of course, health's first, but at what cost? For some, the damage has already been done. The axe has fallen. Here at Brisbane Square, there's five empty shops. Businesses no longer trading. Liquidators have been appointed to the Square's Shingle Inn franchise. Who knows how many more will follow? Nicola and his family at Fiamme just pray they're not one of them. Help your local business. Your local business needs as much support as you possibly can get. Another anxious night ahead as business owners await the Premier's lockdown call. 
Ebony Cavallaro, Nine News. Well, let's hop down over the border now and cross live to reporter Ruth Wynne Williams in Byron Bay. Ruth, thousands of music fans have had some bad news today. Yeah, Andrew, it's really busy here in Byron Bay tonight and that could be because of some of the very full planes we saw arriving this afternoon full of people, including musicians who arrived and found themselves pretty disappointed when they arrived in Byron Bay to hear that the, ca that the festival had been cancelled right at the last minute and then we saw a whole lot of campers turning up at the festival grounds. Uh, the call to cancel the festival happened just so late in the day. It did go down to the wire. Some very hurried phone calls between New South really Wales job, health officials and festival organisers here in Byron Bay. Uh, 15,000 people were supposed to flock to that festival ground this weekend. They're all being told to hang on to their tickets while organisers look for an alternative date. Organisers put out a statement saying they're incredibly disappointed and had hoped to lead the world in showing that Australia could still hold a COVID safe festival. They'll have to put all that disappointment on hold though, Andrew. There are some very big COVID restrictions coming into play in this area. They are in place now and that's because New South Wales health officials are very, very concerned about this latest case. It was caught in a pub uh, here in this area and they are very, very concerned. Uh, health restrictions are now in place. Yeah, let's hope they can find a way back around to it. Ruth, a big blow there. Thank you. Well, a devastating blow tonight for Virgin Ground Crew too across the country, stood down by the company without pay and thanked for their understanding. The aviation giant is blaming the global pandemic, but the Transport Workers Union says it's the PM who's responsible, demanding a return to JobKeeper for domestic crew. The email landed out of the blue last Thursday. Virgin says it was sent to 170 pit crew across the country. The Transport Workers Union believes hundreds more are impacted. The stand down direction is effective until April 18. Workers told they won't be required to work their usual hours and won't be paid, but to check their roster for any shifts that may arise. The TWU says the letter may have been sent by Virgin, but is 100% Scott Morrison's handiwork. It's not rocket science, but the government has let these workers uh, fend for themselves. A new wage subsidy is in place for international Qantas staff now that JobKeeper has ended. They're earning $500 a week, but domestic workers aren't eligible. The TWU is demanding JobKeeper be reinstated for those families. And it should remain in place until the effects of the virus has passed. And in aviation, that means until in domestic aviation, the economy is back open and fully open and persistently open. In a statement to Nine News, Virgin says reports that Virgin Australia has fully stood down its ground crew in the wake of JobKeeper ending are categorically false. None are fully stood down. We are working hard to ramp up our flying to enable more hours. An urgent hearing has been requested with the Fair Work Commission. It could happen as early as tomorrow. For workers who don't know when they'll receive their next paycheck, it can't come soon enough. Pay them JobKeeper, that'll be good for them, it'll be good for Virgin and it'll be good for the domestic economy. Alison Ariotti, Nine News. A man has been shot and another is behind bars after a dispute turned violent in Ipswich. Neighbours were forced into their homes as police snipers swooped, chasing down the shooter. Streets locked down as police storm homes on the hunt for a gunman. Let them through the house because obviously they couldn't get through the driveway and then, I don't know what they did, jumped over the back fence. Police and snipers were blocking the street, hiding behind our cars and it was full on from there. Quivering in the gutter at the end of Woods Court, a 39-year-old man is assessed by paramedics after being shot. And then next to me, a really loud, horrific scream saying, Ah, just been shot and people like yelling about you've just shot him. It was just before 10 p.m. last night when police say Jake Brown opened fire at his Bellbird Park home. Officers quick to shut down the area, but the shooter fled. And the cars come out skidding out of the street, getting away, and then it was dead silence. Investigations leading them to David Street, 
15 kilometres away in North Bouvel. Brown arrested in a nearby street. They were just saying, get down, get down. As detectives combed through Brown's property this morning, his family arriving were unaware of what had unfolded. I haven't spoken to him. I don't know anything. The victim was shot at three times. He was taken to hospital with minor arm injuries. Brown's matter was heard briefly here at the Ipswich Magistrates Court with the court hearing the 24-year-old was wanted over a return to prison warrant. The case has been adjourned to tomorrow. He's been charged with possession of a shortened firearm and acts intended to cause grievous bodily harm. His grandparents telling Nine News he fired after being threatened. Natasha Kramer, Nine News. The Prime Minister is accelerating a plan to make guided missiles in Australia, saying they're needed to keep the nation safe. It comes as Labor wraps up its two-day national conference with a pledge to cut taxes on electric cars. It's cutting-edge, precision-guided, long-range and deadly. And the Prime Minister wants the US-designed anti-ship missile and others like it to be made in Australia. To ensure that we have what we need to do what's right for all Australians and to do it with the best partners in the world. The government is accelerating a billion dollar guided missile building plan and is inviting defence companies to bid for it. This is a big strategic change and it's about bringing a degree of complex manufacturing back to Australia to support the defence force. For a simple purpose. To keep Australians safe. To hedge against a more dangerous world. The threat of conflict in our region is growing. Uh, it's probably as high as I've seen it in 25 to 30 years. Anthony Albanese was also making a pitch for the future today. One of the things that Labor wants to do is to cut the costs of electric vehicles. Pledging to cut taxes on electric cars and spend $200 million to install 400 neighbourhood batteries across the country. A community battery which will lower their energy costs and also reduce their emissions. At the last election, the Prime Minister attacked Labor's plan to boost electric vehicle sales and lift emission standards. No, I, I didn't ridicule those, that technology. That's good technology. If not the Prime Minister, then perhaps his ministers. 50% of those apprentices will be driving an electric vehicle under Bill Shorten. If it feels like an election campaign, that's because Labor believes it's back in the race. Now no one's talking about an early poll and the government looks like the underdog. Chris Ullman, Nine News. A motorcade in honour of US police officer Eric Talley has passed through the streets of Colorado. Hundreds of people paid their respects to the father of seven, who was remembered as a brave man who loved family more than anything. Officer Talley was one of ten people killed earlier this month when a gunman opened fire inside a grocery store in Boulder. The Biden administration has finally allowed journalists inside its main border facility for migrant children, which is currently at 1,600 per cent capacity. More than 4,000 migrants are crammed into pods, sleeping on mats on the ground. The U.S. Border Patrol says they have encountered an average of 5,000 undocumented immigrants a day over the past month. A woman accused of killing her husband. Tonight, allegations she Googled how to get away with murder. Red light road rage madness. What sparked this violent Queensland outburst? See the full video. And at the end of sport, something old and something new. The impressive fly pass to mark 100 years of service in our skies. I know what you see doesn't make sense. But I'm going to support him because I see him behind the scenes. Finally. We've spoken about moving. We've spoken about kids. Melissa opens her heart. I've heard things from Bryce's mouth. OK, like what? You're going to be single at the end of this. And betrayal. Who said it? I don't want to get into this. I want to know who said it. OK. Jason. Jason. It's what? like a freight train. I cannot believe that just happened. Jason, it's just being thrown under mm -hmm. the bus. Tonight, 7.30 on 9. The ugly price of progress. What are they doing to us? These homes will be bulldozed to make way for a train station. You're playing with people's lives, not... It's just not a, another square box on the map. Now the fight to protect their castles. I said over my dead body. A current affair tonight. This is your Australia Zoo.
Bring your family to meet ours. Be immersed in the pristine open spaces. Take on our epic obstacle course and embark on a treasure hunt of discovery at Australia Zoo. Okay, just keep your head down. Yes, Paige. Feet shoulder width, that's your best bet. Did you say bet? Mm -hmm. Now just grip it and rip it. Magnificent. A 350 yard bomb. And I just smashed her favorite in the next race in Melbourne. Where did it land? It hasn't. Four! Hey. You should see when I use two hands. It's shacking easy to bet anytime, anywhere with the points bet app. The police can't help themselves. My super doesn't work out for me. I'll be working forever. Well, we've worked all our lives for this place. We'd hate to have to sell it to fund our retirement. That's for sure. Authorised by B. Dean for Industry Super Australia, Melbourne. I'm back dominating the paint. Mm -hmm. And I'm all over the Sydney Quaddy. Beautiful. Thank you. Not you. Points bet. It's shacking easy. Nine News, brought to you by Industry Super Funds. An aggressive road rage attack on a busy highway has been caught on camera. You can see the moment this man confronts another driver in Cairns, throwing multiple punches and violently screaming until a bystander steps in. Witnesses filming the outburst and uploading it to social media, sparking outrage online. It's understood no one was seriously injured in the attack. The incident's yet to be reported to police, but officers are urging anyone with information to come forward. A woman charged with killing her grazier boyfriend at a property near Tamworth is accused of conducting hundreds of Google searches, including how to commit murder. Police say Natasha Beth Darcy used a toxic cocktail of drugs mixed in a blender to make his death look like a suicide. She's a widow from Walker, a small country town where she's accused of murdering her farmer boyfriend, Matthew Dunbar. The 42-year-old was found dead on his multi-million dollar Merino property, Pandora, in 2017, a property Natasha Beth Darcy stood to inherit and was allegedly willing to kill for. Coincidentally, Darcy's estranged husband, Colin Crossman, was one of the first paramedics on the scene after she reported Matthew dead. In his opening address to the jury, the prosecutor argued Matthew was drugged with a cocktail of drugs, including ram sedatives mixed in a magic bullet, drugs sourced by Darcy from a vet under a false name. Matthew was later found in his bedroom with a plastic bag over his head, which was connected to a helium tank. The court heard Darcy conducted hundreds of internet searches in the months before Matthew's death, googling 11 toxic wild plants that look like food, how to commit murder, 99 undetectable poisons and plastic bag suffocation. She also searched, can police see past web history, suicide helium and how long after suicide is there a crime scene? The jury also told she looked up, will helium show up in an autopsy and days later, can police see deleted text messages? Messages. Darcy has pleaded not guilty to murder, telling police at the time she found Matthew dead and tried to resuscitate him. But today the court heard her defence that she planned and assisted Matthew to commit suicide. The prosecutor argued there was a plan implemented by her to sedate and kill him, adding Darcy knew of her partner's history with depression and she exploited this and killed him in the manner she did to make it look like a suicide. It's the Crown case that Darcy had a tendency to sedate her partners with the intent of causing harm for her own financial gain, once hitting a strange husband, Colin, over the head with a hammer and burning down the family home as he slept with a cocktail of drugs in his system after she'd fed him tacos. Emma Partridge, Nine News. Germany is suspending the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine for people under the age of 60 over blood clot fears. The medicine regulator found 31 cases of a rare blood clot among the nearly 2.7 million people who'd received doses. AstraZeneca says international regulators have established that the benefits of the vaccine far outweigh the risks. 
The lifting of England's stay-at-home order has led to wild scenes in the city of Nottingham, where brawls broke out in a park. The gathering of hundreds was a clear breach of the new regulations, which allow people to meet outdoors, but only in groups of no larger than six people. Rule breakers were also busted in Birmingham, with police releasing thermal images of an illegal rave beneath a motorway breach. Dinner time has come a long way from the introduction of the microwave to bread makers and now the air fryer. But what appliances save families the most time and money? Our breakdown is coming up. Next though, we'll tell you about the hire a hubby who should be called fire a hubby. How this man's YouTube cooking tutorial spelled the end of a six year manhunt. And a funny reminder of the dangers of working from home. on now, where you can save up to 50% off a huge range of stylish pieces. So, you'd better hop to it. Amart Furniture. It just makes sense. Get your Woolies worth for Easter with fresh, large, cooked Australian tiger prawns. Just $27 a kilo. Save $3 a kilo. That's why I pick Woolies. I like a bar of chocolate, please. change. Happy birthday, Mum. There's a glass and a half in everyone. The police can't help themselves. My super doesn't work out for me. I'll be working forever. Well, we've worked all our lives for this place. We'd hate to have to sell it to fund our retirement. That's for sure. Authorised by B Dean for Industry Super Australia, Melbourne. Travel the whole world of Australia in the new Nissan Navara from 49490 Drive Away. At Ladbroke, our aim is to make racing even more exciting. Introducing our new Chief Entertainment Officer, Mike Iceberg. I am here to show you all how to Ladbroke it. Let's Ladbroke the action! That's not safe. Let's Ladbroke the riders. Ladbroke the way. A number of southeast homeowners say they've been swindled out of thousands, handing money over to a builder they say never finished the work he was hired to do. Tonight, the building watchdog is warning all renovators to check who they're hiring before they pay a cent. Tristan Davies had grand plans for his Morningside home, hiring Matthew Cooley of Renovations Brisbane in November to build his dream carport. Pay the 17k. But he claims the work was never completed. We determined that he wasn't licensed to do the work that he had done here. So he'd only been licensed to do maintenance and non-structural work. Uh, we've got a ceiling that collects water when it rains. Uh, I've got a temporary builder's fence that I have to open and shut every time I want to come and go from the house. We took swift action in relation to the licence of Renovations Brisbane. That licence is now cancelled. What Tristan didn't know is Cooley had been operating as a hire a hubby months earlier, but was stripped of that franchise licence, accused of taking cash from other homeowners and not finishing jobs in ritzy suburbs 
right across the southeast. I've genuinely had sleepless nights about this. The Queensland Building and Construction Commission so far receiving around 20 complaints for money owed from Cooley. We're aware of more than $100,000 um, at this stage. And it's not just clients who say they were swindled. Former subcontractors coming forward telling Nine News they allegedly haven't been paid for weeks worth of work. Yeah, it's extremely frustrating because we have a, a very thorough recruitment policy. It was the Hire a Hubby parent company who first reported Cooley to the QBCC back in June. Any of the work that was done by Mr Cooley before we terminated his agreement, uh, if there were any customer concerns, then we've taken up the role as franchisor to make good on those uh, guarantees. We tried to reach Cooley. Hello, thank you for ringing Matthew from Renovation Brisbane. With no luck. I've heard um, that he's registered his company to a new address in Tasmania. And if in doubt, you can contact the QBCC. Sally Guyatt, Nine News. It was an emotional day of testimony in the trial of Derek Chauvin. The prosecution called on a string of witnesses, including a mixed martial arts fighter who called the police and an off-duty first responder who said she was blocked from offering assistance. Feel free to just take a minute. <laughs> A frustrated firefighter who just wanted to help. Tell me what his pulse is right now. Genevieve Clara Hansen was off duty and on a walk when she found herself on the scene of George Floyd's arrest. She pleaded with officers to provide medical assistance. Why weren't you able to do any of that? Because the officers didn't let me in to the scene. Hansen's chilling testimony was one of many today. MMA fighter Donald Williams was just metres away from officers when he decided to call the police on the police. And why did you do that? Because uh, I believe I witnessed a murder. He too was overcome with emotion, listening back to his call to emergency services. Murderers, bro, yeah, murderers. A number of witnesses who could not be identified provided audio testimony, including a nine-year-old who heard paramedics tell Chauvin to get off George Floyd, but he did not follow their instructions. How did it affect you? I was sad and kind of mad. And, and tell us, why were you sad and mad? Because it felt like he was stopping his breathing and it is kind of like hurting him. The court also heard from her cousin, the woman who filmed the viral clip that sparked a mass movement, Darnella Frazier, explaining to the court why she decided to film that video. Because I slowly knew that um, if they were, if he were to be held down much longer, he wouldn't live. She stays up at night, apologising to George Floyd for not doing more to save his life. In the United States, Alison Petrowski, Nine News. Interpol agents have tracked down a mafia fugitive who'd been hiding in the Dominican Republic by recognising his tattoos in cooking videos he'd posted to YouTube. The 53-year-old man was arrested close to the capital, Santo Domingo, after being in the country for more than five years. In 2014, a warrant was issued for his arrest over drug trafficking for the Calabrian Mafia. It's the government department responsible for safeguarding America's atomic weapons. So when this gibberish was posted on the US Strategic Command's Twitter account, there were fears a nuclear code had been leaked. Turns out it was the work of a child. The social media manager had left the page unattended for just a moment. Well, months on and still experiencing symptoms. Tonight, the true lasting effects of COVID-19 are revealed. Green and gold and a roux in the shoe. We have your first look at what our Olympians will wear at the Tokyo Games. And a baby boom for Australia's answer to the Easter Bunny. Hi. Hi. Trouble. Edie's father turned up on the doorstep. Oh, here we go. Finally comes knocking. We could do this if you want to. You could keep it. Keep it. Hey, Grace, Jeremy's taking Edie. Taking Edie. This is the night. Where is he now? I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. That delivers. He's taking her. A roller coaster shock straight to the heart. Tonight on Nine. At McCafe, every sixth coffee is free when you order on the My Macca's app. Buy any five coffees and your next one is on us. Download the MyMacca's app and start earning your free coffees today.
Take the NRL to the Neds level with a Same Game Multi bonus pack. This Thursday and Friday, place a three or more leg Same Game Multi on the NRL, and if one leg fails, get up to $50 back in bonus bets. Take it to the Neds level. Introducing free MasterChef cookware from Coles. For every $20 you spend in one transaction, scan your Flybys card to earn one MasterChef cookware credit. That's the way to cook like a MasterChef. Coles. Value the Australian way. The most anticipated British TV event of the year. He died in the line of duty. I'm interested in one thing and one thing only, and that's bent covers. Line of Duty, Season 6, streaming April 1st, only on BritBox. Free trial at BritBox.com. Travel the whole world of Australia in the new Nissan Navara from 49490 Drive Away. Take Stakes Day to the Neds level. Back a horse in races one to six at Rose Hill this Saturday, and if it runs second or third, get up to $50 back in bonus bets. Take it to the Neds level. got Australia's most recommended bank by your side. Do you think? Boat and cabin fishing is BCF and fun. Say hello to our BCF and holiday sale this Easter. Sleep easy with 25% off all Wanderer sleeping bags. You <laughs> beauty! BCF and fun. Hey! up to 10% on your first year's premium when you get a new Allianz Home Insurance Policy online. Allianz, supporting Australians for over 100 years, no matter the weather. Search for a quote today. Our athletes will wear green and gold on their sleeves and the boxing kangaroo on the soles of their shoes at the Tokyo Games. The uniforms unveiled today for an Olympics many believe won't go ahead. Uniforms unveiled under the threat of rain for an Olympics going ahead under the threat of COVID. It's certainly going to put an extra step in our athletes' uh, training from today onwards when they see this uniform and know that it's waiting for them when they get to Tokyo. 480 athletes will compete in green and gold, the first race getting vaccinations before July. They're vaccinating doctors and everything, some of the most important people in, in society. Then, mate, like, oh, I'm sweet to get the jabs. Yes, we want to be vaccinated, of course, uh, but if we had to go not vaccinated, then the games will go on. For the first time, uniforms include an Indigenous piece, featuring 52 footsteps of the 52 Indigenous athletes to compete in the Olympics. And then being able to follow their footsteps and, you know, make them proud and then make my family and my culture back home proud, it's just, it's just an honour to wear. Australian uniforms have long courted controversy from animals and akubras in Los Angeles to mambo designs in Sydney. This time around, some features are hidden from view. Um, inside our shoe we've got a little boxing kangaroo, so every, we, you, you can, you can. So every time we uh, slip it on, we've got a little bit of BK um, with these boxing gloves to encourage us as we uh, walk out the door. The one uniform missing is that of the opening ceremony. That will be released in May, but it's still not clear how many athletes, if any at all, will march. We know already that we're going to be in a pretty tight bubble, uh, but what the opening ceremony looks like, we're still to find out. Charles Croucher, Nine News. The lingering effects of COVID-19 are becoming clearer. A landmark study of Australian patients has found one in three is still battling symptoms eight months after contracting the virus. One in five reported fatigue, shortness of breath and tightness in the chest. The study, led by the Kirby Institute and St Vincent's Hospital, found women and those who received hospital treatment had an increased risk of developing so-called long COVID. 
They're Australia's answer to the Easter Bunny and now bilby populations are thriving inside fenced predator-free havens set up by the Australian Wildlife Conservancy. Bilbies have been placed into five protected environments across the country, many experiencing baby booms over the past 12 months. It's good news for the marsupial. There are fewer than 10,000 left in the wild. Queensland's NRL teams all sent south. Where the Titans and the Cowboys will be based, those details next. At the end of sport, honouring our heroes of the sky. See how the RAAF marked 100 years of service. Pretty and pink, why these tiny diamonds are expected to sell for millions. Yeah, there were a few showers along the coast and around the Bay Islands today, but it is nice and clear here in the city. Right now it is 21 degrees, but a higher chance of showers for tomorrow. It's an Easter feast of footy on nine. Good start. Four blockbuster clashes start Thursday. Seagulls Panthers put on an Easter show. You've got to be kidding. Then two Good Friday crackers. Oh. First up, can the Easter bunnies hunt down the bulldogs? The bunnies are over. Then prime time, who'll take home the chocolates? Storm Broncos. My goodness. An Easter footy extravaganza starts Thursday on nine. Head to Chemist Warehouse and save on big brands like Children's Panadol 5 to 12 Years Liquid 16.99, Austin and 300 Value Packs 27.99, and any Optus Slim Platinum Plus Shake Pack 44.99. Chemist Warehouse, great savings every day. We're for the intrepid explorers and the happily homed. We were created by the men and women of Qantas over 60 years ago, and today we're a bank for all Australians. That's Saturday at Rose Hill and Caulfield on Races 1 to 4. Get your Woolies worth with Everyday Rewards. This week, spend $20 on fresh meat in a single transaction and collect five times points on your total shop. Boost online now, then shop and scan your card. T's and C's apply. That's why I pick Woolies. Join any NIB combined hospital and extras cover online and we'll waive the two and six month wait on extras. Plus, join by March 31 and get one month free. Join NIB today. It's worth it. Bread is a part of life, so why not make life poppier, crustier and more enjoyable? Down to the very last crumb. Abbott's Bakery. Every bit better. Take the NRL to the Neds level with a Same Game Multi bonus pack. This Thursday and Friday, place a three or more leg Same Game Multi on the NRL, and if one leg fails, get up to $50 back in bonus bets. Take it to the Neds level. If you're getting on the tools, Repco will get you the right parts fast with 15-minute click and collect or four-hour home delivery available online so you can get on with the job. Repco. It starts with the parts. The ugly price of progress. What they doing to us? These homes will be bulldozed to make way for a train station. You're playing with people's lives, not. It's just not a, another square box on the map. Now the fight to protect their castles. I said over my dead body. A current affair tonight. This sports report brought to you by Neds. Whatever you bet on, take it to the Neds level. The NRL is abandoning Queensland with all matches scheduled to take place here this weekend transferred to Sydney. The COVID-enforced changes will see the Titans join the Broncos in New South Wales tonight before the Cowboys head south on Friday as part of an on-overhauled draw. 
And then there was one. The Cowboys are the only NRL club still based in Queensland tonight, following the Titans' relocation to Sydney late this afternoon. They said, look, our, our intent is to get you home as quickly as we can after this week's game, but then that'll be, obviously, that'll be on the grounds of how the local situation goes over the next few days. The Titans were supposed to host Canberra on the Gold Coast this weekend after the Cowboys tackled the Sharks on the Sunshine Coast, but both games have been shifted to Sydney to form a Saturday doubleheader at Jubilee Stadium. That's the world we live in at the moment with everything that's going on, so um, I think the NRL playing a safe approach, which is smart. It's a lot better to be doing this from fourth on the ladder than from bottom of the ladder. The Broncos' clash with the Storm on Friday is going ahead as scheduled at Amy Park. Brisbane will fly in and out of Melbourne on game day before returning to their Sydney bubble. Today was a scheduled day off, um, but we've had small groups um, shuttling out to Olympic Park to do... Uh, small units of work, some recovery and some gym extras. So, um, you know, I don't think we've missed the beat in that regard. Nine News understands Tom did and will start at halfback against the Storm, despite being named 18th man. Adam Jackson, Nine News. The Lions are out of Brisbane and out of Ruckman, with Chris Fagan to rely on tall forwards to fill the void left by the injury to Oscar McInerney. But the coach has put the onus on his little men to step up against Collingwood. Big O for omission. Oscar McInerney to miss tomorrow's ruck battle with Magpie Brody Grundy because of an ankle injury. But Lockie Neal is expected to play despite lighter duties at training. That often happens with some players. They're just a bit light early in the week and getting them ready to play, so he should be fine. Joe Denneher is expected to step up and take over a heavier role in the hitouts. But even missing his number one big man, Chris Fagan has put the scavengers under pressure. Oh, look, it doesn't make it any, any easier, but the bottom line is that the battle's got to be won at ground level. The Magpies are the immediate concern, but the niggling worry beyond tomorrow is how long the Lions will be staying on the road and getting more reinforcements into Victoria. In the ideal situation, you'd like to have them all down here because you don't, we don't quite know how long we'll be staying at the moment. We need to get exemptions. Hamish Stewart returns to the red side at inside centre to face the Rebels on Saturday and play his 50th match for Queensland. One of four changes by Brad Thorne to the run-on team, including goal kicker Bryce Hegarty at fullback and Jordan Pattaya shifting to the wing to cover the injured Suliasi Vunavalu. Ash Barney's stellar run at the Miami Open continues, advancing to the semi-finals. If the Queenslander wins her next match, it'll ensure she holds on to the world number one ranking. You can't see here, but there's a massive smile uh, <laughs> but behind my mask. But no, it's, it's, it's always nice to come back to somewhere where you've had good memories. This is one of my... My favourite weeks of my career a couple of years ago uh, is where I broke into the top ten for the first time. Michael Atkinson, Nine News. And let's hope she plays very well. Yes. That's all we have in tonight's sport. Thanks. Good on you, Wally. Thank you. Well, in Canberra today, the place to look was up as more than 60 aircraft took to the skies to mark 100 years of the Royal Australian Air Force. The Queen also paid tribute from afar in a stirring ceremony marking a centenary of sacrifice and service. A spectacular show of might streaking a crisp Canberra sky. In formation, a parade of historic warbirds and advanced fighter jets. Super Hornets, F-35s, Hudson Bombers, Globemasters and the piece de resistance, a 10-minute showcase of roulettes. A jaw-dropping display of precision aerobatics, barrel rolls, corkscrews, each aircraft flying just three metres apart. The nation's capital was a centrepiece of the Royal Australian Air Force celebration, commemorating 100 years of heroism and courage under fire. It is the people, not the equipment, that have built the Royal Australian Air Force. To mark the anniversary, Governor-General David Hurley presented a new Queen's colour. Over the last century, during times of war and in more recent conflicts, the Royal Australian Air Force has demonstrated its capability, adaptability and reliability in helping to keep us safe. The ceremonial flag unfurled before the RAF's top brass on the banks of Lake Burley Griffin. In Her Majesty's absence... Three cheers to Her Most Gracious Majesty. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Before a fly passed for the royal salute. A ceremony fit for the men and women who protect and defend our freedom then, now, and always. 
Sophie Walsh, Nine News. Dinner time. It's the nightly chore that's largely unavoidable, but more and more families are re relying on appliances like these to help out. Tonight, air fryers versus slow cookers. Which is better? We have the answer next. But before then, let's check in with Gary. And we are starting to see some cooler evenings, Gary. Oh, noticeably cooler, Melissa. There was one town this morning in the Gold Coast hinterland that dropped to 12 degrees. But tomorrow, well, it's the second month of autumn. Our daylight hours getting a little bit shorter. So those nighttime and daytime temperatures should start to cool down a little. Right now, 21 degrees in the city. Your forecast for tomorrow, plus your outlook for Easter coming up next. Hi. Hi. Trouble. Edie's father turned up on the doorstep. Oh, here we go. Finally comes knocking. We could do this. Yeah. If you want to, you could keep it. Keep it. Hey, Grace, Jeremy's taking Edie. Taking Edie. This is the night. Where is he now? Is he? I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. That delivers. He's taken her. A roller coaster shock straight to the heart. Tonight on Nine. The new Lexus Crafted Edition SUVs come with incredible features, such as striking black accents, a breathtaking moonroof, and exclusive benefits like valet parking and the freedom to borrow a different Lexus when you need it. That's because right now, they come with a complimentary upgrade to our Encore Platinum Owner Benefits Program. Ends April 30. Police can't help themselves. My super doesn't work out for me. I'll be working forever. Well, we've worked all our lives for this place. We'd hate to have to sell it to fund our retirement. That's for sure. Authorised by B. Dean for Industry Super Australia, Melbourne. Take stakes day to the Ned's level. Back a horse in races one to six at Rose Hill this Saturday, and if it runs second or third, get up to $50 back in bonus bets. Take it to the Ned's level. I feel like going back home. Right now, while the man This Easter, let's celebrate all the little things that make time together great. The backyard barbies. <laughs> Kitchen creations and everything in between. Coles, value the Australian way. At Pacific Harbour, Bribey Island, the beach is part of your life. Our final land ever. Just 50 minutes from Brisbane Airport by bridge. Last chance. Visit bribeybeach.com.au. After four decades of world firsts, Mitsubishi brings you an Australian first. Ten years warranty with ten years cap price servicing. Mitsubishi 1010. Built and backed for the time of your life. Hey mate, have you seen the sports bet app now has Sky Racing? Really? Yep. Live racing from all around Australia right there on your phone. Oh, I'm liking this. Yeah, just one tap and you're streaming from Randwick, Caulfield, Ascot, Dapto Dogs. Righto, mate, I get it. What are you, the sports bet guy now or something? I actually do a pretty good impression. <clears throat> this is new. Sky Racing, now available on the sports bet app. Bloody hell, that's pretty good. I told you. The Good Guys Easter Doorbuster deals are on now. 18% off this Bosch washer, 14% off this Hitachi TV, this higher dishwasher only $4.99. Plus Thursday only get 10% off a huge range across the store. Easter Doorbuster deals only at The Good Guys. Finance now in the share market and the Aussie dollar posted good gains today. Here's business reporter Chris Kohler. The share market rose a solid 0.7% today, its best session in two weeks. Infrastructure companies like Transurban and Sydney Airport were particularly strong, while Telstra came off the boil after a solid run. Harvey Norman shares fell sharply as it now trades without the benefit of its dividend. The Australian dollar was mostly higher, flat against the US dollar at 76 US cents and just shy of 65 euro cents and 55.4 British pence. And today marks the last day of the quarter. Over the three months, the Australian share market is up a pretty healthy 2.4%.
We've all heard the slogan, diamonds are forever, but the two rocks we're about to show you are members of an exclusive club. These pink diamonds from Western Australia's Argyle Mine are going under the hammer tonight after the news. Lloyd's Auction House thinks the two half-carat diamonds could fetch a million dollars. Pink diamonds are already extremely rare, but now that the mine is closed, it's unlikely many more will come onto the market. Kitchen gadgets often make our busy lives much easier when it comes to making meals for the family. And now that we find ourselves having to cook even more in the middle of a snap lockdown, Canstar Blue has put the most popular of the lot to the test to see if they really are worth all the hype. Not too long ago, this was the kitchen appliance that was king. After that came the trusty bread makers. Then the next must-have kitchen gadget was the multi-cooker, soon followed by the countless juices. And today, the two hottest kitchen appliances are the slow cooker versus the air fryer. Well, they're certainly very trendy gadgets at the moment. It cooks the dinner, it cooks the roast, it cooks the roast veggies, it'll even cook the cake. A new survey conducted by Canstar Blue has crunched the numbers, determining if the these much-loved kitchen gadgets really are worth all the hype, based on affordability, convenience and if they're easy to use. Design as well, you know, you want it to be quite like aesthetically pleasing if you're going to live it on your bench and also, which is a big one, is functions and features. Based on the feedback of almost 2,000 people, Canstar Blue found 55% would recommend buying a slow cooker to their friends and family, compared to 67% of those with an air fryer. One-fifth admit to cooking more since purchasing their slow cooker, while more than half, with an air fryer, are using them weekly. Their prices also not setting them apart by much. The average spend for a slow cooker, $106, compared to $156 for an air fryer. The good news is, though, you can snap up either, no matter your budget. A lot of the um, models that you can get are for under $100, which is great value for an appliance that's not going to just be sitting in your cupboard gathering dust. Either one proving perfect for the winter months ahead or for some any day of the year. It's got the queen's spot on the bench. It doesn't go in a cupboard. No one puts that baby in a cupboard. At least until the next new and hot gadget comes along. Jennifer Martinez, Nine News. There you go. You've heard it now. <laughs> uh, let's uh, go to Gary for a look ahead at the weather now. Uh, Gaz, I know we're not there yet, but can you give us a little bit of a sneak peek ahead to the long weekend? Oh, certainly can, Lofty. You can just about guarantee showers over the Easter break. But look, Friday, Saturday, it'll just be a coastal shower, not too much for the city or the western suburbs. Different story Sunday and Monday with a weather system set to bring some heavier showers. And we could even see up to 30, even 40 millimetres on the coast over Sunday and again on Monday. So a little bit wet to wrap up the uh, long weekend. We'll get to your seven-day outlook in just a moment. But a beautiful evening in the city. Take a look. Live pictures around the city. Uh, the Story Bridge looking blue at the moment. It's been blue all week. It is Go Blue Week all in aid of autism but just a nice evening around the city. Let's have a look at temperature ranges across southeast Queensland and the minimum and maximums were below average. A bit of a trend this week. The overnight low 12 degrees at Canungra in the Gold Coast hinterland. 27 the max today right here in Brizzy and Ipswich. The Golden Sunshine Coast made it to 25. Redcliffe 26 degrees. For the capitals hot for Perth and Adelaide. A little cloud in Hobart. Canberra a foggy start to the day but a sunny one will follow. Early fog patches around Sydney followed by a coastal shower. Partly cloudy for Darwin. Queensland a few showers Showers in Cairns, scattered showers in Mackay, mostly sunny for Rocky and Gladstone. Now some late showers tomorrow around Gympie and Maryborough, but a mostly fine day. Sunny in mid-30s inland for Mount Isa and Longreach. Once again, some early fog in Roma, but a nice day will follow. For the southeast, partly cloudy, a medium chance of showers tomorrow. Probably the highest chance this week uh, for showers extending uh, across the suburbs and making their way certainly to the city. Temperatures tomorrow low to mid 20, so another coolish day. Moreton Bay, south to south easterlies, 15, even up to 25 knots. Been a pretty average week, Bodies. Well, the sea's still up to two metres, staying that way on the bay and offshore. Brisbane, 60% chance of showers tomorrow, any time from late morning and in the afternoon, a high of 25. Expect up to five millimetres in the gauge. But the next seven days, a possible shower Friday, shower or two Saturday. Showers increasing Sunday, could even see up to 30 millimetres. Monday, expecting anywhere up to much as 35. 
five millimetres. Ipswich, partly cloudy Friday, chance of a shower Saturday, showers developing on Sunday and increasing for Monday. While on the Goldie, an early shower Friday, afternoon showers Saturday, scattered showers Sunday, heavier falls across Monday with showers even into Tuesday. For the Sunshine Coast, well, not a lot of sunshine with a few showers Friday and Saturday. Cloudy and wet Sunday and Monday. Once again, a few showers extending into Tuesday. So the first couple of days of the long weekend will be the pick, getting wet from Sunday on, guys. Thanks, Gaz. And that's Nine News Queensland for this evening. Layla is next. See you tomorrow. Good night.